we're all about women supporting women, obviously. I know Taylor Swift's been someone that has inspired you both. What's some advice she's given you recently? Oh, gosh. I don't even know. Um... They thought Deja Vu ripped off Cruel Summer. I never understood that. I, are we, can we talk about how those songs are just not similar? It doesn't need to be a competition. She was always, always posting about Taylor Swift and yeah. then stopped. Feels like something had to have happened. The song Vampire is about a situation that left her confused and hurt. And having a run in with your idol that went negative could definitely lead to heartache. It's textbook millennial mean girl behavior. Taylor Swift wants to rule the music industry. She doesn't have time for any new artists to share the spotlight with. And Olivia Rodrigo isn't welcomed into Taylor's world. She made sure Olivia knew that she was boss and even involved lawyers so Taylor could get a heavy payout. This is a nasty feud between Taylor Swift and Olivia Rodrigo. So let's get into it. <music> Hey guys, today I am so excited to share with you a mobile game that has captured my heart. It's called Love and Pies. It's not just a game, it is a cozy, fun, and heartwarming experience you don't want to miss out on. Now, Love and Pies isn't your typical mobile game. It's a story about Amelia Green, a newly divorced mom who embarks on a journey to rebuild her family cafe out on the countryside, which sounds adorable. But things take a dramatic twist. Amelia discovers that her mom goes missing and her cafe is up in flames. <gasps> So here's where you step in because it is up to you to help Amelia navigate through love, drama, and mystery as she sets out to rebuild this cafe and to find her mother. What sets Love and Pies apart is its captivating storyline and its engaging gameplay. You'll find yourself merging ingredients to create delicious pies, serving customers, and decorating your cafe to make it your own. Download it for free on iOS and Android devices today and join Amelia on her unforgettable journey. Journey. I promise you won't want to miss it. So use my QR code on the screen or follow my link in the description below to go and download Love and Pies now. I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Love and Pies. Use my QR code or link below to download this game. And please enjoy this video. Everybody's been talking about Taylor Swift, and it's hard for any artist to navigate their career without acknowledging her. And there's a dynamic between Taylor and Olivia Rodrigo I'd like to explore today, because while these two seem like they should be friends, they are not, and allegedly for good reason. This report writes, there was something so sweet and innocent about the relationship between Taylor Swift and Olivia Rodrigo. The pair seemed thicker than thieves, as Olivia came onto the scene having always been a hardcore Swifty. She was quoted on the Travis Mills show that Taylor was one of her biggest idols and biggest songwriting inspiration. Olivia said to have Taylor's blessing was a really, really special thing. We're, we're all about women supporting women, obviously. I know Taylor Swift's been someone that has inspired you both per personally and professionally. What's some advice she's given you recently just about like, just as your career skyrocketed? Oh gosh, I don't even know. Um, I just like love looking up to women who have been so successful for such a long time in this industry and I just, I don't know, I think it's really great that uh, we can all support each other and uh, uh, get along the way we do. When Olivia released her song Driver's License, it shot up right behind Taylor Swift's song and Taylor was happy for her. She even wrote on social media, I say that's my baby and I'm really proud. So how did we go from this to widespread rumors of a rift between the two? Supposedly, Olivia put out diss tracks on her album. She did not go and attend the air tour so as a big Swifty like why wouldn't you be there? So what could have happened? Well, back in 2021, the same year that Olivia entered the music scene, Taylor released her version of her 2012 album, Red. In addition to this album re-release, Taylor included new songs, like the one titled Nothing New, which Taylor reveals that she's anxiously fearing the day that she's replaced by a fresh, younger singer. So, I mean, is that, you know, could that be Olivia? Taylor came onto the scene when she was 17. This song would have came from her fourth album, album when she was 22 so maybe she would have the fear like after four albums deep of being replaced by someone else in the industry kind of like a Mariah Carey 
Ariana Grande, but I, I don't really see that as a replacement. In the second verse of the song, the lyrics read, are we only biding time till I lose your attention and someone else lights up the room? But it's the bridge that particularly is telling, with Taylor openly admitting that she is dreading the day that she meets a young woman that is following in her industry footsteps, who's really going to be like the next Taylor Swift. She doesn't want that to happen. It was the first time I was not a shiny new artist. I was on my fourth album and I felt like, I think this happens to a lot of artists where they, they have their breakthrough moment and then the moment after that is really hard for them because they're just not getting the same. It's like the first time you walk into a room at a party and everyone's like, oh, Kevin is here! <laughs> when you have your breakthrough moment, like, Kevin! And then, and then, the, then the next time you walk in, they're like, sup? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the third time you walk in, they're like, um, so uh, what do you want to do tomorrow? Do you got, do you got to, blah, 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 and they're just talking. And you're like, but I'm here. I really like the way that Taylor explained that because it shows how her mind works, which I really appreciate how hardworking she is, but she wants the most, like she wants everything. So I'm like, I mean, seeing her dominating the world right now, I'm like, what else could she want? Because it seems like she wants to have that effect like throughout her career. And she's only gotten like, you know, now she's like the biggest. I mean, she's won the most awards in some categories, the biggest tour. So really Taylor wants it all and she seems to be threatened by anyone else who's coming in and could be similar to her vibe. Even if the song Nothing New wasn't written about Olivia, I think the song tells a lot about how Taylor feels towards new and upcoming artists. One person wrote on Reddit, I always felt like the line, then she'll say she got the map from me, it's about a young female artist, hinting that Taylor expects some credit from the new generation of female artists. I'd imagine Olivia wants to be her own artist and not feel like she owes her success to someone else. So if they're going to be in the industry, they need to like hail the queen is essentially what the vibe I'm getting. Quote, Taylor is openly insecure about the prospect of losing relevancy and being replaced. I mean, well, shoot, she's the most relevant she could ever be. I'm sure she didn't want to be buddy buddy with someone who's being called the next Taylor Swift. Taylor clearly has a horrifying fear of being replaced and likely sees Olivia as a legitimate threat. Someone else added that Taylor only appears to be comfortable supporting young artists if they stay in their lane and don't show signs that they may surpass her. Quote, Taylor just doesn't seem like a girl's girl to me. She'll uplift women if it looks good for her brand, but the moment she sees someone come for a piece of the pie, she gets threatened. Olivia has the pipes and the song writing chops, and she's so young, and if all of this speculation is true, that must have scared the crap out of Taylor. Some people actually felt like nothing new should have been a song that Olivia was featured on because the song was written when she was when Taylor was 22, but she re-recorded it and she asked a singer named Phoebe to come on to the track instead of Olivia. During an appearance on The Late Night with Seth Meyers ahead of the Red release, Taylor explained why she asked Phoebe to sing on the very special song. Phoebe Bridgers is one of my favorite artists in the world. I just think she's like, if she sings it, I will listen to it. <laughs> it's um, I just, I love her voice. And then I also love that she's a very funny person. So I was dealing with that moment in my life. And um, so that song's really special to me. And I sent it to Phoebe and said, it would mean the world to me if you would do this as a duet. Cause I really wanted another female artist who I loved to sing it with me because I think it has a very female artist perspective that we go through that experience. So early into their friendship, I guess their friendship, they hadn't actually met or had spoken. It's just been like, you know, some interviews and some social media comments. But when Driver's License performed so well, Taylor did send Olivia a package. So she must not be like too threatened if she's sending her gifts. I got a package from her with this like handwritten note. And she gave me this ring because she said she wore one just like it when she wrote Red. And she wanted me to have one like it. And I, and like all of this amazing stuff, she like hand wrapped these gifts. I truly like don't understand where she finds the time, first of all. But like, <laughs> also I feel so lucky that I just like, was born at the right time to be able to look up to somebody like her. That ring must have meant a lot to Olivia because she actually wore it in the cover art for her album Sour. So a little bit of Taylor Swift in the 
piece of the work, which I don't know if Taylor would really like that or not, but I guess it's flattering. Now, everything seemed great, but when Olivia's debut album, Sour, was released, shortly afterwards, the relationship between Taylor and Olivia started to sour. And that's because there's some complexity in the music industry, and when it comes to credits and rights, and you know, Olivia's inspired by Taylor, but how inspired is she allowed to be? This is where it gets messy, because not right away, but a week after the album was released, there was a report that Taylor and her producer, Jack Antonoff, was given a writing credit on the song One Step Forward, Three Steps Back. Taylor wanted to make some money off this song, and it's because Olivia says that they interpolated, interpolated? I guess that's some type of music uh, reference. New Year's Day, which is a Taylor song from Reputation, with the song One Step Forward, this concept she wrote a verse and a chorus for. She says, I was in the car on a road trip, and when I got home, I decided to sing it over the chords of New Year's Day. I think they are really beautiful chords. I was lucky enough to get that approved. So it's on the record now. So before, it wasn't approved, and there could have been like some type of a legal battle. We've seen that happen plenty of times before, but they didn't let it go that far. But that's not the first time that Olivia's work has been overtly inspired by Taylor's, and there's been other songs as well, like Olivia's smash song Deja Vu and Cruel Summer. So are these two songs alike? I mean, are they alike enough that Taylor's now going to pretty much make all the money from Olivia's new album, which sounds like what Taylor would want to happen. But they thought Deja Vu ripped off Cruel Summer. I never understood that. I are we, Can we talk about how those songs are just not similar? Like, I, they're not about the same thing. Cruel Summer is, like, so happy. Deja Vu is so sad. Like, I get it was, like, part of the bridge is kind of similar. But never not once has any person, like, heard, like, played Deja Vu on Spotify and been, like, thank God I never have to listen to Cruel Summer again. Like, that's not the way music works. It doesn't need to be a competition. And I think that, I just hate when music gets so competitive sometimes. I agree. Like, I listen to Cruel Summer and Deja Vu, like, ready to be like, okay, like, let's hear that. And I was like... Okay, I just like, don't what? Moving into July 2021, Taylor gets more credits off of Olivia's songs. On July 9th, 2021, Variety reported that Taylor had been given another writing credit off of the Sour album. The credit was given to Taylor, Jack Antonoff, and a few other people. It was a non-collaborative credit, meaning that Taylor did not sing or actively collaborate on the song at all. The circumstances surrounding this credit are a little hazy. There is no clear answer as to whether Taylor asked for the credit or someone in her team asked for it or maybe there are some legal implications something clearly happened behind the scenes and another one of these songs are now going to taylor and it's all about this song deja vu and it's supposedly taking some of the bridge from cruel summer specifically the yelling bits in both songs which i feel like yelling is kind of like subjective like how are you gonna take yelling and you know, copyright infringed that. It didn't help that Olivia had done an interview in April 2021 telling Rolling Stone that she loves the song Cruel Summer and it was one of her favorite songs ever. She went on to say that I love the yelly vocal in it, the harmonizing that she does. I feel like they're super electric and moving, so I wanted to do something like that. So before her album's even released, she's over here saying like the song she's inspired by, what she wants to do for her album. So Olivia's not really helping her case. It seems like every month since the album was released, Olivia is giving more song credits away. She had to give away credits for Good For You to the lead singer of Paramore, Haley Williams. Because there were too many similarities between Good For You and Misery Business, pointed out by fans. So, damn, Olivia is like, <laughs> I guess her work is very much inspired by. This article mentions that these people getting these credits, they are benefiting financially. Especially, like, Olivia's album did very well. I listened to a bunch of the songs, and a lot of these other artists, Taylor Swift, Paramore, they're getting the money for this, you know, artist's new album. And I feel like it's not like sampled enough, but I get, you know, I don't understand music. Comment below what you guys think about this credit battle because I feel like these artists are just trying to like get some of the money that Olivia would be making. But also, you know, stealing work is really important, so you can't do that. Billboard later revealed that Olivia had given up 50% of the royalties on each of the songs as a result of these retroactive credits. So really, she was screwed at the end of the day. I mean, the album may have done well, but, you know, she didn't make a lot of the money because uh, once the credits are paid, then the record label has to get paid, and then Olivia gets paid, so she's got a tour if she wants to really profit off the music. How did Olivia Rodrigo avoid a lawsuit with Taylor Swift? 
When Olivia Rodrigo's debut album Sour came out, it was one of the most streamed albums of the year. Everyone loved it, until Taylor Swift and Paramore fans pointed out striking similarities in Rodrigo's music, suggesting Rodrigo was guilty of copyright infringement. Rather than wait until a lawsuit and a messy legal battle emerged, Rodrigo gave songwriting credit to Taylor for her song Deja Vu, which has already earned over $1.3 million. Taylor's team now owns 50% of the song, but listen to what happened next. Rodrigo also gave Paramore 50% ownership of her mega hit Good For You, which was allegedly influenced by Paramore's misery business. 50% seems good for Paramore, not really good for Rodrigo. Can you believe that Olivia giving Taylor and Paramore songwriting credits has cost her over $2 million? Even though this drama with the credits, it was all handled behind the scenes with the teams and it was all very professional, it definitely caused a rift between Taylor and Olivia, especially because Olivia was so supported by Taylor up until her album was released. And then Taylor realized that she's not only like the new like Taylor Swift, but she's like stealing Taylor Swift's work, at least in Taylor's mind. In October 2021, Olivia reflected on encountering mean girls in the music industry during an interview. She said there was a lot of bullying and a lot of jealousy and a lot of people whom I adored my whole life being mean girls. In December 2021, Olivia is fed up and she is frustrated by all of the comparisons. Olivia was named Entertainer of the Year by Time Magazine and she said it was really frustrating to see people discredit and deny my creativity. Olivia says young women are constantly compared to each other. I'm the new this or the this woman meets that woman and that can be reductive. I'm just Olivia doing my own thing. It's meaningful when people recognize that. Because Olivia is clearly upset with how her first album went, with all the credit issues, with how people are interpreting her work, a lot of people believe that Vampire could be somewhat inspired by Taylor. Well, I do feel like, you know, Vampire is about a guy. I do think a lot of her second album could be you know, I mean, she's got to be upset, and I'm sure she had someone review it before, so she'd have to give up all those credits again. Here is a blind item about Olivia Rodrigo addressing the fact that people think that her song Vampire is about Taylor Swift. The actress and A-list singer pretty much made it perfectly clear how much she detests the A-plus list singer and did not deny the lyrics in the blood-sucking song are about the A-plus lister. And this is allegedly Olivia Rodrigo, Taylor Swift, and the song Vampire. While many people initially thought that the song Vampire was about her ex-boyfriend Adam Faze, some sources told people that it could relate to the Taylor Swift situation. Song lyrics include, hate to give the satisfaction, asking how you're doing now, how's the castle built off of people you pretend to care about, but you made me look so naive, the way you sold me for parts as you sunk your teeth into me, oh blood sucker bleeding me dry. Around the same time, Taylor Swift announced her Latin American tour dates for the Eras tour and also named Sabrina Carpenter as her supporting act. If you have not seen my video about Olivia and Sabrina's feud, there's a lot there. So Taylor having Sabrina come on clearly shows that she's not Team Olivia. A lot of people were being shady towards Taylor saying that she's only hanging around Sabrina because she doesn't see Sabrina as a threat and because Sabrina has this dynamic with Olivia and um, that's why she's uplifting her, calling her like, you know, sweet angel princess and all these things because uh, she wants to make it clear that she's not going to side with Olivia or invite her on tour anytime soon. One person wrote, Taylor Swift is using Sabrina Carpenter as a pawn to interact directly sabotage Olivia Rodrigo's career. So this move by Taylor and her team to hire Sabrina was definitely a big like bomb within their rift. She's also bringing Sabrina Carpenter on uh, on tour in South America, which fans were like, mm, damn, because there was always like rumors that she would bring Olivia Rodrigo on tour. Yeah, I feel like that clearly didn't happen. There were rumors that Olivia Rodrigo said no to doing yeah. the shows. Yeah. Maybe because I don't know. There was like she was always, always posting about Taylor Swift. And yeah. then stopped. Feels like something had to have happened. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe now she's bringing Sabrina Carpenter. Interesting. Good for Sabrina Carpenter, though. I know. That's a great, awesome opportunity. Meanwhile, Vampire marked Olivia's first song ever since everything unfolded, and the singer references feeling used and blindsided by somebody she once loved, which made it easy to connect the track to her former idol. Not to mention the entire concept of being bled dry by a vampire could be a metaphor for the money that Taylor earned off of securing a 50% credit on Olivia's biggest hits. A lot of people in my comment section seem to be convinced that Olivia dragged Taylor for filth in this song. I hate to give the satisfaction as 
asking how you're doing now. How's your castle built off people you pretend to care about? In her songs, Taylor Swift often compares her career to a castle. Who else does that? It's such a specific question Olivia asks. Is she saying that Taylor built her career off of pretending to care for people and for her fans? The way you sold me for parts while you sunk your teeth into me. The reason Olivia Rodrigo and Taylor Swift didn't publicly speak at the Grammys this year, despite sitting so close to each other, is because the awkward tension of Taylor asking or demanding songwriting credits on two of Olivia's songs on Sour. So did Taylor kind of sell out their friendship for parts of a song that she has factually made hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars from? You sold me for parts. There are lyrics in the song like win for me and not her because girls your age know better, which could be a reference to her being an easy target because she's young and an inexperienced artist compared to veterans in the industry who may be harder to manipulate. And while initially Vampire's mention of a true love led many to assume that the song is about a romantic love, probably Olivia's relationship with her ex-boyfriend Adam, it's just as possible that it could be about a friendship or idolization. Especially since shortly after the song's release, a source close to Olivia's said to be People magazine bluntly this song is not about adam olivia herself vaguely said that she wrote vampire because she was upset about a certain situation and that song is about feeling confused and hurt hmm when olivia rodrigo and conan gray were at the peak of their fame in 2021 they were definitely used by taylor to promote her albums at that time including fearless taylor's version did taylor suck them dry when she knew that she could use them to promote the re-records and then just kind of abandon them after and not be friends her lines i used to think i was smart but you made me look so naive girls your age know better olivia publicly said the whole awkward situation where she had to give Taylor songwriting credits that kind of left her looking uncreative and silly was a lesson in business. Maybe girls Taylor's age know better and more about the business. And Olivia sadly said that the song Vampire is about a situation that left her confused and hurt. And having a run-in with your idol that went negative could definitely lead to heartache. If things couldn't get any worse, Taylor also decided to do a little tour moment with Paramore. Given that Olivia had been such a big Swifty throughout her youth, it was even more surprising when she told the New York Times that she had not been amongst the hundreds of celebrities flocking to watch the era's tour. Now, in September 2023, Olivia did an interview saying there's no feud between her and Taylor, that she doesn't have beef with anyone, she's very chill, and she keeps to herself. When talking about the credits off of her album Sour, she had something to say. She said, I was caught a little off guard at the time it was very confusing and i was green and bright eyed and bushy tailed is that the phrase it's not something i was super involved in it was more of a team on team so i wouldn't be the best person to ask but i'm sure she wasn't happy when asked olivia said she doesn't feel like she would do that to other people in the future she says who knows in like 20 or 30 years where she'll be but uh she claims that she wouldn't go and try to find a little piece of a song to you know take credit for and then to you know rob these people blind when asked if her song vampire was about taylor swift she she said, I never want to say who my songs are about. I've never done that before in my career and I probably won't. I think it's better not to pigeonhole a song being about this one thing. When Olivia's second album Guts was released in September 2023, fans were quickly looking up the lyrics and called out both songs Lacey and The Grudge as being references to the Taylor feud. Here's a lyric from the song The Grudge. I have nightmares each week about that Friday in May, one phone call from you in my entire world was changed. Fans think this could be giving detail on how the writing credits were asked for. Sour was released on May 21st and the last Friday of May was the 28th. Credits were changed on June 9th, so the timing works. Here's another lyric. And I hear your voice every time and I think I'm not enough. Fans think this could be a reference to the fact that Taylor's voice is played almost everywhere these days. Now even though Guts could be referring to Taylor and what Taylor had put Olivia through, in January 2024 Taylor Swift gives Olivia a stand ending ovation for her Grammy's performance. Yes, she performed the song Vampire, which, you know, may be about Taylor Swift, and uh, supposedly Taylor was all about it by, like, applauding her. Taylor Swift is a 30-year-old millennial woman, 30-something, and Olivia Rodrigo, correct me if I'm wrong, is not even 21 years old yet. And when I saw Taylor standing and clapping during Olivia's performance, I was like, oh my god, she knows exactly what she's doing, and it's textbook millennial mean girl behavior. And Taylor is a calculated person. And what are the headlines on this moment? Oh, Taylor Swift is the bigger person for clapping for Liv Rodrigo. Do you not think she would have wanted that to be the headline? <laughs> Do you not think that she didn't know that people would be saying that if she did that in that moment? Now, maybe Taylor was trying to be supportive. Maybe this is all part of the plan for world domination. Kind of feels that way. But I want to hear what you guys think of this video in the comments below. I'm interested to see how they're, you know, 
working relationship unfolds. But I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye guys. Thank you Love and Pies for sponsoring this video. Make sure you guys use my link below to go and download the game or scan the QR code on the screen.